morning, good afternoon, good evening, or whatever time you're watching this video. Welcome to another post-game reactions video on the Down in the Valley podcast. My name is Edson Ochoa, one of the co-hosts uh, of this uh, RGBFC uh, podcast. Along with us tonight, we've got Ray Silva of South Texas Border Sports that is uh, coming on the uh, on the video to give his thoughts on today's uh, performance by RGBFC. For starters, it was almost, this game was almost a rinse and repeat from last week's game against Tampa Bay. RGVFC dominates in the first half. They have the, the, the chances uh, on goal. There were multiple, I, I think I, I told you in the first half, there were like two or three where it's like, Trey Muse just reacted just to react because that was the thing to do. And it just so happened that the ball like hit his shoulder or hit, hit, hit his arm. Uh, in other words, the ball was unable to go into the back of the net. Um, and then you get a, a 30 minute or more than 30 minutes, actually. Nearly an hour delay, yeah. actually. Uh, weather delay due to lightning. And so you got an hour, almost an hour of a delay. The game comes back and... RGBFC lost that momentum they had, they had built up before before the delay. Uh, eventually, um, Char uh, Charleston Battery gets a, the go-ahead goal uh, off of uh, Augustine Williams, um, a.k.a. Augie, as uh, his friends love to call him. And um, from then on, it's just RGB, as much as they tried, they just weren't unable to break open uh, Charleston. And then you bring in Beto Avila, if you're an Austin Bold fan, you might recognize that name. Also, if you're a Dynados Dino or Houston Dynamo fan, uh, you recognize the name of Beto Avila. Comes in and he brings in uh, that experience uh, into, into the match, provoking a, a penalty against uh, Frank Nodarse. And once again, Augie Williams was able to slot it into the back of the net. And there was no response from RGV at the end of the day. 2-0 win for Charleston at HB Park. You know, this game has a lot of historic references, and all of them for the wrong reason, Edson, you know. You can scratch the 2020 season now because you really can. This has been the official worst start of any RGBFC era team to start a season here at home. I mean, I mean the numbers aren't lying to you. Four draws, three losses. And what kind of losses? Three zero, three zero, two zero now. And it's and it's like I think what hurts the most to the fans. And obviously for me as a report fan, as I love to call them in Mexico, I think what hurts the most is the fact that you're seeing glimpses of improvements from this team. It's not being reflected in the scoreboard. But what hurts the most is that when things go wrong for this team, it's like all hell breaks loose. The, they, the players get demotivated. They start making all these mistakes. Ricky Reese just talked to us uh, in postgame, uh, which, by the way, uh, check out the postgame videos on our uh, race channel, South Texas Border Sports. Um, but in it, he, he, he talked, you know, the fact that, yeah, it's like they score on us. We lose our concentration. We start making all these mistakes that ends up, you know, with all these other, you know, goals, uh, goals against us. And we aren't able, you know, to recover. I'm not sure what your evaluation is on, uh, on this particular analysis of mine, but it just seems like um, this team isn't for the most part, mentally strong to come back from an adverse situation. You know, uh, I'm going to cede a lot of points to you on this, on, the, on that part of the conversation, because you look at Ricky Ruiz's overall numbers this year. He is one of those players that I want to say he's nearly played all the minutes and nearly all the games for RGBFC. And to be real thin on the forward lines uh, as far as like having substitutes available for a player in his position, it's kind of very difficult to replicate his type of production because you really don't have anyone on the bench. So you can, you can see that mental fatigue being a 
huge part as to why the struggles that RGVFC has had in this in this part of the season. One of the things I want to continue to add with this analysis that you bring up, mm-hmm. and you, you kind of you bring up Ricky Reese, and I'm going to go a step further. The goal, the goalkeeper today. There was a change in goalkeeper today. Yes, Carlos Marancio. His second start, first in the league. You know, Wilmer said during post game that hey, Tyler Derrick has played almost all the games. He wanted to see what he had in Marancio, and you know, for an outsider looking in, or that barely sees RGVFC, this could have been a wake up call for Tyler Derrick too. Okay, because there, I mean, there could have been instances where last week's game against Tampa Bay, that easily could have been two nothing had he found a way to stop that third goal to go to go in. I mean, it, it was already a loss during the late stages of the game, but to stop that third goal from going in, that he could have done a little bit more. But to go back to your original point with Ricky Reese, it, I. I I fully see the point because the defense has changed so much. The midfield has changed so much. The only thing that hasn't changed has been the forwards. Mm-hmm. I mean, you get to see all you, – you get to see – It's always a given. Ricky, Wilmer, and and, uh, Francois. and Francois in one kind of variation or, mm-hmm. or another. So, for as long as there isn't change in that forward position, I think – I, I don't want to say that there's going to be more frustration being mounted, but I just feel like that awareness and that sharpness goes to a steep, goes to a decline throughout each game. And you could probably give the Toros two weeks rest. And I kind of feel like you're going to kind of get the same result. And and you can probably bring back how, uh, the injured players back to full health. And and even then, with what they're seeing so far, you, you might feel that there's going to be that same result. But until we see a pinzón, until we see a full... Or Galindres. Frank, until we get Galindres, and we get more minutes out of Frank Lopez, we don't fully know what the full potential of the RGV FC forwards are because we only have three and we've seen all three variations and there hasn't been a complete balance because you've had players like Taylor Davila who has scored a few. You've had Ricky Weiss who has scored a few. Even Francois who has scored a few. Wilmer who has scored a few. The, the team just doesn't have that one reliable striker or that one reliable full playmaker to really explode what this team can really do on offense. There's a topic that we didn't talk about last week. And I wanted to talk about, unfortunately, there was no, there was no podcast. Yeah. There was no post game, uh, neither. But last week, Juan David Capriz just brought up a point and he said, Tampa Bay in the second half made adjustments that started working well for them. We did not have a way to 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 respond. adjust to respond to those changes, and that worries me because one of the things I talked about that I liked about Wilmer last season and in the uh, mostly last season was his ability to adjust during the game according to the circumstances. Now, all of a sudden, you're starting to see desperation, even from Wilmer, to a point where now he's like yelling at the refs and talking about the refs in post-game press conferences. And it's like, we've got a situation within our players. Our defenses are making mistakes. Our midfielders are having trouble distributing the ball. Our attackers can't put it in the back of the net. They've improved putting it on frame, but they can't put it in the back of the net. And now you've got a coach that, for some reason, you know, he's being affected too. And now, like, he can't figure out how to adapt, how to get, you know, maybe not tactically. Or well, in last week's case, yes, could have made some adjust tactical adjustments to trying to get that midfield uh, back in their favor. And it just there, and it, it 
the opposite happened. They started making dumb mistakes that costed the second and third goals. And this in this game, once again, it's a situation where you know the the players you know can't respond to what Charleston uh, is doing and how effective they were right in front right in front of goal. Yeah, you saw the change that when they brought in Beto Avila for the Del Barajas. You, I saw that switch as a man-for-man -man switch, and boy, did it pay off for them because Nodarse, who is returning from who knows what type of injury, mm -hmm. you kind of see Nodarse as one of the better improving pieces from last year. I kind of think this year he's somewhat regressed a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I just feel that Nodarse and the rest of the defense, I mean, they kind of, I mean, and it's like I asked Wilmer in the in the post game, do you feel the defense needs to have a soft reset of what you want your team to be? Because let's face it, the only match where you saw that full defensive reset and that got you a nice result was that. Monterey Bay were, yes, 0-0 zero, zero filler match, but uh, to what? But to that extreme, I mean, you haven't seen that much of a defensive balance. I mean, uh, you, you you want to see a defensive semblance, yes. And then the problem the problem is with this situation with the defense is that you can't really pinpoint exactly what the problem is because one week, for example, the game against Mexico, one week is the. Uh, mistimed substitutions from Wilmer Cabrera. Next week here at home, or the next time at home, was Tampa. And you've got a situation where all, everything just fell apart. You had the players in the correct positions, but they just made some dumb mistakes where they started playing like, you know, you know, rec league soccer where everybody was going towards where the ball was. And there wasn't any organization, any, you know, escalation of, for yeah. example, okay, if I am, let's say I am Wahabakwe, you have the ball. I'm going to go and cover you. Well, you as, let's say, Gabriel Benitez, you better make sure that you're in a position where if he gets past me, you're, you're already right here waiting for that. And it, and it just kind of escalate, escalates like that. Like they just, but. There was no in that in that third goal. There was no uh, organization about yeah. that. So, what what can be done? Because, like I said, there is no consistent reason why the 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 defense is not performing. Yeah. But at the same time, the only thing consistent is it's affecting the team negatively by conceding point or by by conceding goals. Oh. And then you've got the situation where your offense just can't put it in the back of the net to at least counteract those mistakes. And, you know, one of the other pieces that kind of leaves me interested in or, or at least puzzled, uh, and again, we don't know a lot of information, Eric Pimentel, your most veteran guy. And, yes, we, he's come under some heavy criticism this year for picking up some of the most, cha the most wasteful, challenging red cards ever. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, by his standards, in other leagues, it goes in other directions. But somehow here they end up being Reds. And I just kind of feel like he, as a veteran, has to, like, get himself in that, in that game shape, in that mental shape where he's got to, like, be that selfless leader in that locker room and say, hey, look, guys, we're in a bad moment. We haven't won in seven games. And mind you, this is the third time it happens in franchise history. But the first time it happens to open a home season. Mm -hmm. The first time to happen to open a home season. Yeah. So right now, your, your chances to make HB Park a fortress is becoming that much more difficult. Now you're going to have to go on the road and go steal at least four results on the road mm -hmm. and it's been done before, but now you're just sacrificing a lot of the home stuff. And I, and, and, and I think that's where the imbalance and the impatience of RGVFC fans is coming from at this point. So 
in your eyes, because I, I, I tried to ask this question right now to Wilmer, but unfortunately he kind of went off on, a, on another tangent, didn't really uh, answer the question as though, or at least how I thought, or at least the question I wanted to hear, the answer I wanted to hear. But what I asked him was, is, okay, you talk to the, you interact with these players on a day in, day out basis. What has been the feedback that he's gotten from the players as to why is it that when they play on the road, and because you mentioned that we're going on the road against uh, Orange County, why is it that RGB has played for the most part better on the road, gotten better results compared to here at home? Is it pressure? Is it because, you know, uh, the fact that they haven't gotten positive results is getting to them, that, they, that it blocks them? Is it, you know, what is it? You know, uh, uh, he didn't, and just there was no, no answer, you know, to, to that question. So I don't, know what, I don't know what you think about that. You know, I, I think it's, it's I, I feel that that pressure to finally get some results and not only that, but to have a lot of returning players and to be producing these types of results at home, it's starting to burn a little bit behind you now. It, mm -hmm. I, I, I really think as a coach, from a coaching perspective, I, I think it, start, it starts to build up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, you saw it in the presser today. I mean, his frustration built a little bit. Mm -hmm. And he steered off topic. And when I asked him about the soft reset about his defense, it was like he pinpoints it to one mistake. And now, yes, the one mistake, yes, just leads to, to goals allowed. But at, at this point, where do you just hit the reset button? Not only that, Ray, but at what point do you as a head coach say, we're making the mistakes, this is what I'm doing to make sure we don't make these mistakes again? Because, yeah, he's identifying what the mistakes are. But the problem is they're making the same defensive mistakes. We're not seeing an improvement of maintaining the concentration, as Ricky put it. Right now, there's one more thing I want to bring up before we before we finish the this uh, this video. This is already the second week in a row that I've seen something. Usually, I and you know me, you are, you're always in the press box. I usually sit in the press box during the games. The last two matches, at one point of the game or another, I go outside the press box into into the stands and start watching the game from there. There's a couple of things that I, one of the things that kind of worries me the most are you and a lot of people can a lot of people can chalk it up to it being, oh, well, this is uh, I mean, it's part of the frustrations. Uh, 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 it's part of the game and this and that. But it doesn't it, it, it doesn't make it less worrisome. But what I'm getting at is against Tampa, there was a play on here in this goal, this north end goal. The Stampede in. And the Stampede in, correct. RGB has a goal kick in their favor. Tyler Derrick is telling everybody, go up, go up, head up. Taylor Davila, instead of being in the midfield where he's supposed to, he's outside the box and he's asking for the ball. I just noticed that might have been <laughs> taking some other context. Down in the valley, out of context. Uh, but he's asking for the ball from Tyler Derrick. Tyler's telling him, no. Go up. I'm telling y'all to go up. And Taylor Davila refuses to move up. Tyler kicks it. We lose the ball. Uh, Transition. Tampa, Tampa, Tampa Bay gets it back. After he kicks it, Taylor Davila starts yelling at, at Tyler Derrick, complaining why he didn't pass it to him. Tyler Derrick that gets pissed off at, at Taylor Davila like telling him, I'm telling you to move up or something along those lines. Don't, it's not a direct quote, but you could understand there was there's frustration within each other today. 
we saw a situation uh, where Acque was getting mad at Gringo Torres in the midfield. They were, I couldn't hear exactly what, they, what exactly they were complaining about, but they were visibly frust frustrated with each other. The last game, I don't remember exactly, but I do remember something similar as well, where players were getting visibly frustrated with each other and yelling at each other. How, what can you make of that? What is your analysis of that? Does that worry you as much as it's worrying me? There's a lot. There's, there's some truth to that because today I did, I did notice something as I normally come down to the press area near the 85th minute. And I was able to catch the tail end of that Ringo Torres conversation with Wahab or it was late in the game, if I can recall. Yes. And let's just say the body language, something just needs to change. And may, maybe because there's just that much more pressure to get a result here. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I wish I could really pinpoint out something, but yes, I have seen in, in, in different instances in the second half from my point of point of view from the press box of course you get a little closer because you get to see the whole field i have an angled seat where i kind of have to like creep down and and yeah. just kind of like stretch look like this yeah. and yes i i, I do kind of see like a lot of finger pointing uh within the midfield organization where you know they kind of have to like the you know, reposition themselves whereas the Opposing teams, you know, they kind of decipher like where the next move might come or where the next attack mm -hmm. might come from. But yes, I, I, I do feel like there is a, a communication thing going on there that that because we don't we're not here on a daily basis and we don't see Correct. It on a daily basis. Maybe it's just in game frustration and in game, um, you, you, you know. That you could just use it as in-game frustration to really yeah. supplement everything that's been going and I wrong. And I apologize if there's any players that are that are watching this video. If we're complete, if I'm completely wrong, if I'm putting words in your mouth. But from the outside looking in, we see this and we see this visible frustration, and it's like, okay, where are we where are we going with that? The reason I'm saying this be, is because. I know this is going to be subject to, uh, oh, we're just, you know, it's just me, you know, uh, trying to make something out of incomplete information. But you look at this, these two situations, and you've got another one. I don't remember if it was also against Tampa, but, or, or it was a game, the home game before, uh, where Gringo Torres got mad with Robert because he didn't give him the ball, instead passed it to Benitez. Benitez passes it to Gringo, and Gringo's like making a, uh, a big, you know, tantrum about it and almost loses the ball because he was in the middle of a tantrum, you know, but it might be coincidence and forgive me if I'm wrong, honestly, but it looks like it's a thing where it's the, the, the veterans, the veterans where these younger players, they're talking back to our veterans and they're not, uh, they're not, they're not complying, you know, with what the, the the veteranship. I don't know. I don't know if I'm if I'm completely off base, but it, it, it's just it's just one of those things that I I see this. And it's like, man, it really worries me that Taylor Davila doesn't is not listening to Tyler. Uh, Wahal Akwi is fighting with Gringo. Gringo's fighting with with uh, with Robert because of this, and it's like. Are they not taking the these the leaders you know seriously or or, or what? I you know that's I I don't know but you know for me I just view it as on field frustration, which is that, probably what it is. You know, for me I just view it as plain Jane field frustration that you're not getting the results. It's been seven games, and and right now I mean it's the first time the franchise kind of sees this now. Is it the first time where it has seven games? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. But to open a home season, absolutely. And, and I think that's where the the preseason pressure of bringing back 10 players, being in back-to-back -back playoff appearances, I, I think that 
target is growing that much bigger to really say, hey, look, maybe HB Park isn't the fortress that it needs to be. Well, on record, yes, 45 home wins, whatever losses and draws are coming, but those numbers are incrementing and slowly starting to catch up to those 45 wins to start the 2023 campaign. Final thoughts on this game. Wow. Uh, final thoughts, man. I mean, you start Carlos Marancio, you kind of, feel, uh, for me, I just kind of, if I'm an outsider looking in, this is something that you brought up earlier where Tyler Derrick and Taylor Davila may have had a little exchange. You know, maybe there might have been something into that. I don't know. But to get Marancio some minutes, I mean, that's, Probably the only rescuable thing from this, you know, because <coughs> only from the cup game, which you didn't have a great camera view. Correct. You got to see him in here. And let's be honest, person. the defense left them out to dry in that cup game. True, because of the result. But First goal is a wonder goal. I mean, yeah. you know, I think nobody was expecting that shot to go in the way it did. But the second goal, like, they really left. And, they, and they hung on the dry, yeah. but, uh, you know... Sure, the only silver lining to tonight's game is people got to see Carlos Merancio after 10 starts in a row by Tyler Derrick. Yeah, and, and, and you know what? I think uh, uh, to set the record straight, I, I really don't think, because I know there's going to be people that are going to say, oh, well, because I, I honestly, I'm, I'm way honest. I heard somebody, as I was walking over here, I heard a fan say, that goalie sucks. Oh. This game, this game, this loss is not on Merancio whatsoever. Nope. It's not. And I think people need to understand this. This is not on Merancio because you're seeing the same things under Tyler Derrick. Yeah. And Tyler Derrick is not a terrible goalkeeper either. No. Right? So it's easy to go in and blame the goalkeeper because he's the last in line. And that's the beauty of being a goalkeeper is that whenever you do, whenever you have an outstanding job, yeah. you, you're seen. But yeah. at the same time, you have a, you have a, or even if you don't have a terrible game, but if they leave you out to dry, who's let's, who's the first person they're gonna blame? The goalkeeper. Right? Yeah, I mean, the the only blemish you could kind of flip flop, is just the spot the spot kick. You know, I think that's where Tyler Derrick just has a little bit more experience defending, but even then, I mean, it's a spot kick opportunity, and someone needs to play hero to save it. And yeah, we have no more Colin Miller. Sadly, and now we're stuck with Carlos Marazio yeah. and Tyler Derrick for now, and and you know, and it's just going to be one of those uh, growing pains as an independent club now. Look, guys, um, there's been some improvements. Uh, I, I, I'm I'm being honest. There's been some improvement with with this team in some aspects, but that's not enough. And. There's a lot of stuff that needs to improve in order in order to get positive results, especially here at home. Yeah. So I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna lie and say, oh, I'm just gonna look at the positives, forget the negatives. Yeah. This team is this team's gonna be big great. I mean, we're look when we're analyzing this team, it's it's like yeah, we want to see the good, we want to see obviously, but then you look at the bad is what's is what's affecting us, and that's what we need to look at and pinpoint and say. We as fans, we as out from the outside of the technical staff, we are seeing this these things, and they need to be they need to be improved. You, and you all know more than us, and have more feedback. Let's 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 see some improvements out of it. The fans are starting to get frustrated. Unfortunately, this tonight's uh, attendance, whether it's because it was Memorial Day weekend or something, but it wasn't as good. And and, and honestly, like hearing the feedback from from the fans that were walking out disgruntled from this game. It's just it, it, it's just not good for you. They're not, yeah. They they're much closer to not coming back than to than, than to coming back. So, I just hope that for this game on the road against uh, Orange County, uh, we see some improvements. But most important thing, we those improvements that are made, we actually see them at home the next time we're here. Absolutely, thank Ray, you, Edson. Thank you so much for coming on almost on a short notice, talking to us about this game. And uh, where can they find you? Uh, they can find me at. Pro Sports RGV on Twitter, uh, Facebook, uh, also on uh, South Texas Border Sports, and also on Instagram, South Texas Border Sports, uh, YouTube as well on South Texas uh, Border Sports. 
where I'll be posting at some point and sometime uh, early Sunday morning my the post game uh, chats with uh, Coach and Ricky Rees. And I'm trying to sneak in uh, Carlos uh, Marancio as well. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can find us at Down at the RGB on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and of course on TikTok. Um, be sure to also check out the uh, if you are not subscribed to the to the Down in the Valley YouTube. Be sure to do so as well, uh, so where we have the the live podcast uh, on on the uh, on the channel. We also have you know these videos, post game reactions. Uh, uh, sometimes a couple of pressers uh, will be posted on here as well. So there, there's we try to bring as much content as we can as possible. I know we Jacob and I have limited time, especially now. Uh, with our with our day jobs, you know, but we try to bring you all the the uh, the best content that we can as uh, as possible that is feasible with it within our limitations. I want to give a huge shout out to Costa Titan who uh, had the pleasure of talking about to, uh, talking with today. Uh, there was also some other fans that uh, that came up to me and and uh, said hi. Uh, thank you all uh, for your for your support of, of the Down in the Valley podcast, and of course any support that you guys bring to Ray and South Texas Border Sports. Um, Mucho obrigado. Yeah. A anytime you see us, uh, you see any of us on, on, or Jacob as well, if you see any of us here at the stadium, don't hesitate to say hi. We're not going to bite. Uh, but uh, yeah, and it's a pleasure to that you guys are giving us the vote of confidence to bring you all the Toros coverage that you all deserve. From here in HB Park, uh, on behalf of both of us, we wish you all a very good night. Have a safe uh, Memorial Day. And uh, we hope to see you all in the next episode of the Down in the Valley podcast, which will be this Wednesday at 8 p.m. Have a good night.